All right, so last video, I was talking about um, how to create a Visual Studio solution and so on. How do I do this? But then after I finished the recording, I was like, well, maybe I, I should do like a small series, not as a tutorial, but explaining the step-by-step the -step of what I do, sort of like a devlog, but a very informative devlog. So this is what I would do today. <laughs> By the way, I created the repository, the Dynami repository, and I, um, I made some commits. The README that it creates, then the git attributes, then the git ignore, that is very important that you ignore the folders, the temporary folders, and then the initial project that we created. And now I'm ready to, to keep going. And the first thing, what is the first thing you do? So I have the project set up. It's all right. Um, maybe I haven't explained it in the other video, but the reason why I do have two projects is because the engine um, is a library that I will share across different multiple executables because I will have one executable for the editor and another for the player. This is a choice. You can have a single one and then all that won't be necessary, but I like to have it this way. It's better in my opinion. So that's it. Uh, and the, what is the first thing that you do when you start an engine? And the first thing I'd like to do when I do my engines is to have a window open and handle uh, user input like keyboard and mouse. That means that I should create this first. Um, and as I said in the last video, I won't use SDL or like GLFW or something like that. I'm past this time. Now I like to create stuff myself for real. So I will create a folder in the include called OS. And this is everything that is operation operational system. This is hard word uh, dependent, like window events and stuff. Um, and then I create another one in source. And then we should start here with maybe window.h. Which is of course a window file to open a window. And then maybe I need event, events.h to handle events. Um, what else do I need? Oh, we need to 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 figure out the event types to map like the keys and stuff like that, you know. And then once I have this, it is very important. So now I'm on Windows, right? So inside OS, I will create a new folder and I'll call it Windows. And now I'm talking about the operation system. I'm Windows 10 here, so this is Windows. And then I will implement the events and the window here. So right click, I like to name this window, Windows, underline, and the name of my class. This is probably the only time where I use underline and I know this breaks my convention to name files, but this is like a very important thing to distinct. So I think it's, it's worth doing it. And then I will create, um, windows underline events dot plus. And basically I'm not going to create the event types because event types will be a header only. Uh, I will explain that in a moment. But basically, if I want to make a Linux build sometime or a script and build, I will create a folder for that and then it, I will have the implementation. And of course, before you ask, yes, we need to do some guards here to not accidentally compile that for another platform. So Windows event, I would do if def, hashtag if def, underline win32. So this, the implementation will go here, right? So it will only work for Windows. And I will do the same thing for the window. Great. Um, and then I'll proceed here to my window class and I'll create my guards. Again, to prevent me to include this twice. Same for the event. And the same for the event types. Great. 
great. Um, I don't think I'll make a namespace for this engine. Maybe, but I don't think so. I don't know. So maybe I would just write the name as it is. And I would do it probably. So I'll create a class for my window. It will be public and it will probably have a constructor with a title. I need to include a string, of course, in order for it to work. And some other stuff like width and height. And then it may be a good idea that we create a mode, some sort of it. Like, let's create an enum here. System, maximize it, full screen. And then maybe you want to create like a minimize window, stuff like that. I want, I don't. Yeah, this is enough. And then I'll create a destructor for my window. I don't want to make it virtual, but anyways, yeah. And then of course, I like, there's a lot of things that you can create here. I like to keep my API very simple, but you can have like some getters to get window position, size, and then set the position, size, and set the title. But one of the most important ones um, is probably the swap buffers because it swaps the, the OpenGL buffers. Or maybe you can just call it update, void update, or something like that. But I will call it swap buffers. So this one is important. And then I like to create a void pointer for the data and then set it, set it to no pointer. And of course, in width and the same for height. And I need a mode too. Reason why I'm making this uh, private is, and not public is because if you set the width and height of the window, it we're not gonna, gonna reflect into a window, like changing the type and stuff like that. So that's why I'm doing this. And of course I can make getters and setters, but that's it. And the one last thing that I'd like to say is that why I'm making this a void pointer, because again, I'm making this uh, OS agnostic. So I cannot go ahead here in the header of the windows.h and include windows.h and start doing windows stuff here. I cannot do this because this windows.h, this header file needs to be agnostic. So I'm making this void pointer and then in the implementation, I can cast this to something and do whatever I want with it. So that's why I'm doing this. And then I'll create the events. And th by the way, this is not a tutorial, so I will probably stop recording in a moment and maybe show this when it's done. But I, I, since this is the, like the very first thing I write for the code, for the engine, I'm trying to uh, to make this so you, you can follow along. The events need an update because I need to update the state of the event. Um, and I do need some some ways to get like if I'm pressed or if a button is active or released. Uh, but so but before that, I probably need to talk about the event types. So the event types is a way to have like what key does the user press or something like that. It is important to have this and. Uh, Basically, this is very hard coded. The, this is like there's an, an agreement, something like that, that, hey, this engine, like the engines will be, not the engines, like all the keyboards, when you press W, they will provide the operation system a, a specific ID for this key or something like that. So you need to Google that and have that up front and made the huge enum. And I already have that made, so I'm not making it again. So I'm just typing here, okay? Um, I like to call it event. I do exactly. 
I will put this inside a namespace, just make it clear. And I'm now paste this because again, I already have this. And as you can see, I just, it's a huge enumeration for the event type with a bunch of options, as you can see here. And again, there's an agreement that this key will have this and da 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 da. I also have some extra stuff for mouse here because I'm weird. <laughs> so that's it. Okay. That's basically it. Um, and then what I want to do here, once I have this, is of course include the event. So I can do some cool stuff like bull pressed. Can I just call this type? Because it's already part of the namespace. So it will return something if I'm pressing this. And then I like to have active and I have, I like to have released. So those three functions will return if I'm press, if I just press the button, if I'm holding the button down or if I just release this button. And I really like this. I have the exact same, very similar stuff in cave and in other engines as well, because it's very handy. Um, and I also like to have this can be private, it's fine, but I also have to like to have status for my events. And again, I do it very similarly in cave and basically um, what I, what this does is um, it like, because it's hard, but when you update the events, like the r reason this, the way the OS does that is using events, of course, but there's an event if you just press the button, if you just release the button and it's your duty to record that if I'm holding the key or not. So that's why I like to have this. And then I like to have a simple map, like a status, keys with some size like key count and I can define um, event key count can define this somewhere like here and as soon as it beats all this we are fine we are good to go so you can see I have less than 200 I'll put 300 just for safe because this is like, uh, I want to map this into this and this is not in order exactly. So yeah. And now we initialize this with known for everyone. So basically in the update, um, what I can do, just change this to key because it, it fits better, is to access this array with the event type and see if it's known or in, meaning that I just pressed, if it's hold or out. I can actually rename this to better fit this naming. So that's it. Um, now that I have this, this is probably most of the things that I want to handle here. Um, I you probably pause the video. I'll actually pause the video and I'm back when this implementation is done. So this is the first thing I do when I'm creating an engine. So I'll go ahead and implement all that. All right. And it is complete. <laughs> so this is what the main function looks like. Let me, let me put this subscribe here. So I'm basically creating a window with the name subscribe. This is a default uh, size for it but I'm passing it's by default maximized. And then I have this basic game loop that basically updates the event and then checks if the windows is closed. If so, it breaks this 
and then I swap buffers. And of course, to test, I'm closing the window if I press W, but it will also close if I click in the X button of the window. And then if I press F5, you can see that I do have a maximize window with the name subscribe. I can move and resize the window and it will work. I'm not worried about what is inside the window. So as you can see, it is a bit broken at the moment, but this is not a problem. And I can minimize the window, maximize it. It works just fine. And of course, if I press W, it closes. And if I click in the X button, it also closes. Great. Uh, by the way, um, some people may point out that this is not how you develop um, Windows application. What you really should do is to have the Win main stuff and that thing. Well, because otherwise you have this console. Well, I don't mind having it. I think it's easier to have the main entry point and then I can just hide the console. It's one line of code probably to hide this. And I will probably do this, but I will leave it open for now because it helps me debug. So why I don't have an editor to catch the, the STD out of my program, I will leave the console here. But this is the first step. Windows is working and the events are working. So what's next? Leave it a comment because this video is reaching the end and in the next I will say exactly what I will do next, okay? So thanks for watching folks, make sure you subscribe to this channel to not lose anything and I see you in the next video.